In this video, we're going to be talking about the physics of launching bottled water rockets. Now, we have a rocket at ground level at point A. It's going to launch from point A to B. And so let's take a look. So it's launching up, reaches max height at point C, and then comes back down to Earth and reaches the ground at point D. Now, at point A, there is no velocity because that is right before you have launched a rocket. Now between A to B, there is a great deal of net force because there is so much thrust from the rocket. Because from point A to B, you have all that water coming out of the rocket and that is providing a great deal of thrust. And when there is a great deal of thrust, you have a great deal of net force, and the acceleration is fairly large. You know, from our experiments, we can see that the ball rocket launches at 10 to 20 g's, 10 to 20 times the acceleration of gravity. It is quite a bit. Because from our actual launch, our rocket reached 100 miles an hour in a third of a second. Now at point B, the net force is zero. There are still forces on the rocket, but all the forces are balanced. And if the forces are balanced, the acceleration is zero. There is still a little bit of thrust at max speed, but not much. Most of it has been spent by this point. Now at point C, rather between B to C, that is where the net force is actually negative because you have a great deal of air drag. Because from at point B, the rocket's moving so fast and that causes a lot of air drag. So you have an acceleration of gravity far below negative 9.8. So you have a very low acceleration. We're probably talking about negative 12, negative 15, negative 18 meters per second squared. So it's far greater than the acceleration of gravity. So the rocket slows down pretty fast because of air drag. Now at point C, the velocity is zero because you know it eventually comes to a stop at max height. That is where that is where the acceleration is negative 9.8. And on the ground level, it reaches at some high speed. Now between C to D though, the net force is negative and the acceleration is also negative. It is not negative 9.8, but rather probably around negative 4 or 5 meters per second squared because you have air drag opposing. Now, we're going to be looking at the rocket from an energy perspective. So we're going to put the rocket back. Now at point A to point B to point C to point D, you're going to have all these different energies. Now let's have a legend. We have EPE elastic potential energy. That is an energy when something is stretched or compressed. And in this case, it's when we pressurize the water bottle, we're giving it elastic potential energy. Then we have kinetic energy. That is simply the energy of motion. So when an object's moving, we say it has kinetic energy. We have gravitational potential energy. That is the energy associated when something is above the ground. So just by raising it above the ground, we're giving it gravitational potential energy. And remember what potential energy is. It's just stored energy. And lastly, I'm using a blanket term Q for heat. That is signifying all the energy that's being transformed into unwanted energy, such as you know, heat and sound and vibration. Now, the first three, EPE, KE, and GPE, those are mechanical energies. And they can be transferred back and forth. But once energy is transferred into heat, you really can't get that back. So let's look at point A. So right before we launch, when the rocket is pressurized, that is all elastic potential energy. So you can see in the green. It's all elastic potential energy. So that's all the energy the rocket will ever have. Now when we go from point A to B, that elastic potential energy is being transformed. It's being transformed into kinetic energy gravitational potential energy because it's above the ground and just a little bit of heat. So here's a basic pie graph. You can see most of the energy is moving pretty fast. So most of the energy is kinetic energy. Some of it is gravitational potential energy because it's above the ground. And we've already lost a little bit due to heat, sound, vibration, etc. As we continue on from B to C, at the top it is mostly gravitational potential energy because the rocket is several hundred feet above the ground. It stopped for a 
infinitesimally small amount of time at max height, but you can see that we have lost some energy to heat in the orange. And on the way down, that gravitational potential energy is going to get turned back into kinetic energy. So at the bottom, you can see it's mostly kinetic, but you can see we have also lost maybe like 40, so 40% 40 of the total energy from the very, very beginning at point A, which was elastic potential, has now just been lost to air drag, heat, sound, etc. So let's look at this from a force perspective, and this is a lot of information. So we have height, velocity, acceleration, elastic potential energy, GP, KE, and Q. We're going to be looking at all these quantities. So right now, the rocket is pressurized and ready for launch. It is storing a great deal of energy with elastic potential energy. Now the rocket, right before launch, is sitting on the ground, so it has weight because it's on Earth, and it has a normal force because it's sitting on the ground. So when we launch the rocket, look what happens. That normal force disappears and gets transformed into thrust as the rocket begins to lift off off the ground. Now. Take a look what's happening as we go from A to B, from ground level to max speed. You can see the air drag's increasing, but the thrust is going down, because think what's happening here. All these forces are changing over time, because as the rocket goes up, it's using up its mass. And as it's using up its mass, the acceleration's increasing. So you get all these changing quantities. So the air drag depends on the speed of the rocket. The faster the rocket's going, the more air, air drag there is. So let's take a look at that again. So you can see how all these quantities change over time. So at max speed, again, you have a little bit of gravitational energy. You have mostly kinetic, and you've already lost a little bit to heat, sound, vibration, etc. Now at max speed, the net force is zero. All these forces are balanced. The thrust, the air drag, and the weight, they're all balanced. And as we continue on, look what happens to the forces. So at max speed, there is still a little bit of thrust after max speed, but it diminishes pretty quickly. So take a look at these forces. So as we go from B to C, from max speed to max height, look what happens to all these quantities. So let's take a look. So as it's going up, you can see the velocity is decreasing, and the acceleration is actually decreasing too because the air drag is going down. So at max height, so take a look at this blue line under the acceleration bar. That is signifying the acceleration due to gravity. So that is one of the few points here where the rocket's simply under the acceleration of gravity and nothing else. So you can see the only force on the rocket is mg. Now at max height, most of the original energy, most of that original elastic potential energy has been turned into gravitational potential energy, but at the same time, you can see that we have lost, well, some energy to heat, and we can't really get that back. But the bars are just showing that the total energy at the beginning is the total energy at the end. So let's go on the way down. Now on the way down, you can see again, how the gravitational potential energy will get turned into kinetic, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot going on, so pay attention to these graphs. So the air drag is now in increasing again because it's speeding up. And on the way down, the acceleration on average is negative 4 or 5. It's not negative 9.8 because the air drag is diminishing that acceleration of gravity. So at the bottom, right before it hits the ground, you can see most of the energy is kinetic. And some, well not some, a good deal is energy lost to heat, etc. So that is, you can see all, how all these forces change over time. Now let's look at these graphs. Now these graphs can get really complex. And the reason why they're so complex is you have so many changing quantities over time because the mass is changing as the rocket's using up its fuel, so the acceleration's increasing. The air drag depends on the velocity. So take a look at how these graphs work. You can see they're very curvy because you have all these changing quantities. So only at max height is the acceleration of gravity negative 9.8. And on the way down, so from these graphs, 
you can see all these quantities. Our first graph, of course, is velocity, the rate of change of position. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And one that most people are not familiar with is jerk. And that is the rate of change of acceleration. So the physics here gets a little complex because of all these changing quantities, but it is very rich. So that is the physics of launching follow water rockets.